So as you guys can tell by my oversized backpack, we are clearly giving this camping thing another try. But before we get everything set up, got some potential for this sunset, about half an hour left. We'll see if we can catch or time-lapse the last little bit of this while I set up camp. So essentially what I'm doing here for uh, this sunset is I'm going to try and see if I can take uh, a couple of time lapses. Actually, instead of doing a vertical time lapse with the Nikon, I have a better idea. Haha, <laughs> yep, I knew it. I knew the 100 to 400 would come in handy for this shoot here, but uh, I don't know if I trust it on this peak design travel tripod ah, it's like pick the lesser of two evils right anyways peak design tripod with the a1 and 14 millimeter g master got the ultra wide time lapse here and nikon z7 mark ii with the 100 to 400 from Sony, which is clearly adapted. And just gonna zoom in pretty much directly where I believe the sun is setting, but there's a bunch of clouds. So it's really just gonna be a real tight telephoto time-lapse essentially. Um, nothing too special, but what I really wanna test out is the interval shooting, the time-lapse shooting on both of these cameras. If I set these things to uh, two second intervals, I believe I should end up with the same uh, amount of frames and essentially the same length in time lapse if I start it at exactly the same time. So let me just get everything dialed in here on the Nikon. We'll do, we'll set our intervals to two seconds. Both of these are set up to aperture priority. Everything is set to manual focus. And I'll drop my ISO to ISO 100 on both of these guys, aperture priority. F8 on the Nikon, F11 on the Sony. That one's going. Start preparing. All right. Essentially, I'm running the same exact time-lapse settings. We're just running different uh, compositions for each time-lapse. But because we're still shooting in broad daylight, I don't think that our shutter speed is going to fall below two seconds, or it shouldn't fall below two seconds for the shot. So the Nikon should be able to keep up with the Sony. The real test is going to be tonight when we shoot astrophotography. But let me get my camp set up uh, first, and then we'll kind of explain the test and what we're working on here today. Oh yeah, this is going to be nice. Okay, so after doing a little bit of scouting on photo pills, I think that rock, that, that precarious rock that we have our tripod set up, I think that's going to be the spot to be for Milky Way. We're going to do one horizontal time lapse with the Sony and one vertical time lapse with the Nikon and hopefully we'll get pretty identical shots if we get all of our settings correct, but that's what we're gonna test. But figure we can probably set up a tent right here. The wind isn't too terrible. We've got a, couple, a little bit of wind coming down from the mountain, but it's not super terrible. Um, and yeah, we'll have the opening of the tent facing time lapses so we can kind of sleep at the same time while peeking our head out, checking up on our time lapses, check batteries and all that stuff. But let me go grab my stuff. We'll set up the tent and I'll kind of explain the setup that I've got here tonight. It's a little ghetto, but it'll do the trick. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
$60 from Walmart. It's not terrible. Anyways, <laughs> this sunset uh, failed to impress. <laughs> we probably just got a little bit of light there and a little bit of light there for those time lapses. But anyways, here are the time lapses. Hopefully, hopefully they come out okay. Like I just mentioned, these time lapses weren't all that impressive, but it did provide me with a good test of the Nikon for time lapses when it compared to the Sony. In terms of interval timing, as I predicted, there were no issues. Because we were shooting during golden hour and blue hour, our shutter speed didn't fall below 2 seconds, so the Nikon took a shot every 2 seconds, matching the Sony in that department. However, I did notice quite a bit of flickering between each shot when fully rendering the Nikon's time lapse. What confused me even more was that I ensured that I had the exposure smoothing function enabled for this time lapse, since I knew the amount of light was going to be changing in this scene. This was kind of a bummer as I had to correct the flickering in post. Not a huge deal, but I was expecting a smoother time lapse from the Nikon. So a couple of videos ago on the Big Island, I was testing the Nikon Z7 Mark II for seascapes and astrophotography. But when it came to the astrophotography time-lapse section of that video, I made a little bit of a boo-boo and basically I ended up overthinking the whole process altogether. Essentially all my research prior to me purchasing the Nikon camera had led me to the conclusion to believe that the interval in interval shooting for Nikon cameras meant the time between each exposure including the exposure time. So if you had a six second exposure for astrophotography, you would have to set your interval to something like seven seconds to give that camera some time to think. <laughs> Essentially, you had to take into account the exposure time into the interval for Nikon cameras, was what I thought. And that's unlike what happens on the Sony system. When you're shooting with Sony cameras for astrophotography and for time-lapse, if you set your intervals to one second, even though your exposure time is six seconds, the Sony camera will take a shot right after that six second exposure. It, it actually makes sense to what an interval is, which is the time between each different exposure. It doesn't account for exposure time whatsoever. So if I set my camera to two second intervals, it would take a six second exposure, wait two seconds, and then take another six second exposure. So when I went out to go test the Nikon, I set my camera to seven second intervals to make sure I had that second in between each shot to you know, let the camera to process, right to the SD card, whatever it does. And of course, I also had all of the kind of automated settings turned off, you know, noise reduction. We turned off the exposure shooting. We had turned off the interval priority. We turned off the focus before each shot. That way, there's basically less thinking for the camera to do, essentially, is what I was trying to do with the time lapse. But when I ended up taking those finished raw files and exporting a time-lapse. I found that my Nikon time-lapse 
was about half the frames of my Sony time lapse. Essentially meaning that my Sony time lapse was double the length. And that's important to me for you know time lapses and stuff because if I'm on a time crunch, I want to capture as much frames as I possibly can in a short amount of time. That way I can end up with a longer time lapse because like I mentioned in my time lapse video in Capital Reef, you can always turn a longer time lapse into a shorter time lapse, but you can never take a shorter time lapse and turn it into a longer time lapse. So I want to essentially get the Nikon to take a six second exposure and then take another six second exposure right after. I don't want any delay in those intervals. So I had one commenter actually comment and I appreciate this guy from for commenting. I'll, I'll drop the username here. But he actually mentioned that essentially the settings for time lapse are exactly the same on Nikon as they are on Sony. So in theory, if I set my intervals to one second intervals on the Nikon, I should end up with the same length of time lapse as my Sony if I set my Sony up in the exact same manner. So that's what we're gonna test tonight. <clears throat> in the meantime, while I wait for the sun to set a little bit more, get a little bit darker, I can start to see some stars coming out a little bit, but of course the moon is gonna be really bright, so I'm in no rush to start doing my time-lapse tests. We're just gonna have our dinner, enjoy our dinner, and uh, uh, try and get ourselves comfortable for tonight. We've got night divers. Let's hope that they can get into my time lapse. Cause yeah, that'd be cool to have them going through my time lapse as well. Because getting the Milky Way and the moon setting, hopefully these clouds stay relatively clear, hopefully. But um, let me kind of walk you guys through something uh, that uh, I was complaining about when it comes to using the Nikon for astrophotography. So using the Sony for astrophotography is pretty great because we have this feature called bright monitoring and you have to set it to a custom button. So I have mine set to the down button here. But when you set it, it brightens up your frame. So now you can really frame up your composition. As you can see in this top left-hand corner here, we've got the Milky Way. So that's how I was able to frame this shot up. Now on the Nikon, unfortunately, there is no such setting. So even though you can kind of make out the shape of Pele's chair here on the side, that's primarily because we've got the moon in the frame. So it doesn't, it doesn't really count. If you're shooting in pitch blackness though, I'd kind of be SOL kind of in order to kind of frame up my composition. Now, the benefit of the doubt is I framed this up during blue hour, but if I was shooting this in pitch black, to be a little bit more of a challenge. Now the same user that recommended the time-lapse settings recommended throwing this camera into video mode and actually using like a high ISO function to kind of frame up my composition here. So I have this thing set up to the highest ISO possible. We're wide open at f 1.8. We're shooting 1 60th of a second because that's the slowest it can go and yeah it does kind of brighten up the screen make it a little bit easier to frame up, frame up the composition and then you can flip it back over to photo mode once you got your composition grab your focus and you're good to go so again mahalo to that user i'll list it here below um, for the helpful tips hopefully the time lapse works out in our favor essentially what's going to first happen is we're going to watch the moon set then the Milky Way set, and then hopefully get some night divers kind of going in and out of the time lapse as well. So fingers crossed, hopefully we get something good. We've got both of our cameras starting, one second intervals, time lapsing. Yeah, so our core is almost nearly vertical right now. We've got a little bit of clouds rolling in, but for the most part, it's pretty clear skies. I just checked the battery levels on these time lapses. I think we might not quite make it all the way there to 2 a.m. with these current batteries. So I'm gonna swap out my Sony for a brand new battery that should give us 
just enough to make it to that four hour mark, I, I wanna believe. And then the Nikon, since I don't have a spare bot battery for the Nikon, I probably should get one of those, but I'm gonna hook it up to the portable, portable battery pack and hopefully that will be enough to make it through uh, to the night, uh, throughout the rest of the night, or at least for when the Milky Way uh, sets, which is maybe around two o'clock in the morning. So right now it's about 10.30. Probably gonna try and just get as much as I can out of these batteries, swap them out, go to bed, and hopefully wake up with uh, a good time lapse on both of these cameras. We don't get these clear skies very often here on Oahu, so I'm definitely taking and appreciating every minute of this that we have right now. Just like that, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's just kind of hanging out. And that guy is charging. Hopefully that's good, and hopefully these time lapses come out okay. It's gonna be nice to watch this back, uh, maybe in the morning, but this Milky Way core is just gonna set and kind of set right between Pele's chair and Coco Crater. these time lapses side by side, the one second intervals worked as promised on the Nikon. The only hiccup that I had was that the Nikon somehow magically shut off at midnight. Perhaps I programmed the date incorrectly on the interval shooting settings, but regardless, I'm just glad I was able to get the Nikon to work how I wanted to for astrophotography time lapse. Ooh. Oh man. <laughs> Overall, that was a pretty rough night. I don't think I got very much sleep. I kind of just took cat naps here and there when I could. But in terms of the time lapsing, I think it went decently. For some reason, the Nikon just kind of stopped time lapsing kind of around midnight, uh, which was kind of unfortunate because I was still kind of, the Milky Way was still kind of up, even though it was pretty cloudy. But uh, I think up until the point, I think the Nikon performed just as good as the Sony it just took a shot right after the next one but you know we'll take a look back at it in post and just kind of compare just to double check everything and see um, how each of the time lapses came out but I think overall it's a pretty good night. Mm -hmm. 